great. I'm standing in for Paul Kavanagh on the 28th of October uh, for this morning's podcast. Um, this week we're moving into a very uh, busy week in terms of results. We're in the Q3 reporting season, um, but we'll come on to that in a second. Uh, just looking back at last week, um, last week was a fascinating week for both macro numbers and uh, company updates. Um, at the macro level, we had the non-farm payrolls. This was a number that was delayed because of the government shutdown. Uh, the number came in below expectations, which was perfect for the market, um, and pushed out expectations of interest rate rises. So we saw on the back of that the 30-year US Treasury yield fall, which is where mortgage rates are priced off. And that was good for the mortgage and interest rate sensitive sectors of the market. So you can see that uh, here uh, the US housing group Pulte, uh, which is inversely correlated to uh, the US Treasury yield, went up uh, quite strongly last week. Also, uh, the retail sector and the S&P also had a strong week. Um, this is about consumer discretionary, about them having more money in their pockets because their mortgage payments are, are lower. So. It's been a strong, strong driver and strong tailwind for those parts of the market and the general S&P. On the other side of the monetary coin, uh, we saw the Chinese uh, monetary authorities uh, pulling in some of the liquidity in that market. Uh, we see periodically that uh, the, the central authorities withdraw from, from the interbank lending market, uh, which reduces the liquidity, uh, reduces the amounts that banks can, can lend out to fuel the property. Uh, property market there and, and really what we're seeing there is uh, concerns about the property bubble uh, from the central bank authorities and just trying to keep that in check. So um, as you can see here, um, as that uh, lending rate went up, we saw the Hang Seng have quite a bad week last week, down 4% peak to trough. Uh, within Europe, uh, we saw PMIs coming through pretty much as expected. So we've come off the bottom there and we continue to see a sort of gentle recovery in, in, in European forward-looking economic indicators, which is you know, satisfactory for the market. Um, at the stock level, um, it was particularly interesting last week. Um, what we've seen in the absence of a lot of growth coming through in the emerging markets is more interest in, in some of the, the thematic or structural growth stories in the UK. Uh, and, and in US stocks and, and within portfolios we've been playing the internet stocks through Google and Amazon and last week we saw some results from both of those their Q3s. These stocks have been strong going into their Q3s so um, it was interesting to see investor reactions on those numbers. Both Google and Amazon went, went up 10% on their figures um, and we saw um, Google post uh, an increase in clicks of 26% quarter on quarter which is a strong number. Um, and also at Amazon we saw strong sales. So, so the interesting thing here is that the market's getting more comfortable with the Amazon multiple, which on a P rating is very high, but on an enterprise value to sales uh, looks fairly reasonable. In fact, if you strip out the Amazon Web Services business, which is growing very quickly at Amazon, the retail business looks on a you know, fairly similar multiple to Walmart. Um, Best Buy in the US, yet it's growing five times quicker, so, so we continue to like that story. Equally, Whirlpool had another uh, a very big pop on their figures. Um, uh, this again is, is related to the housing market. Um, rather than playing the house builders, we've bought the white goods manufacturers who typically benefit six months after new home sales as people replace their, their white goods. Um, and here we saw a 4% increase in revenue year on year, which related to a double, translated to a doubling of earnings uh, throughout the year. So that's a strong number, a lot of momentum behind that sector in the US uh, and in Europe. Finally, Boeing uh, confirmed their numbers, extremely strong order book here. Um, uh, this is, again, part of a theme of increased air travel. They have more orders than they can fill at the moment, and what they're trying to do is increase the rate at which they can build their planes, particularly the Dreamliner, which is changing the economics for airlines, um, and therefore in high demand. So, um, moving into the week ahead, um, it's a pretty strong, heavy week for, for results, um, particularly uh, the UK banking sector. Um, we've got uh, the main constituents of that sector reporting this week, uh, and also the UK oil sector. Um, 
In terms of the banking sector, uh, we've got Lloyds tomorrow. Um, we'll be looking at uh, uh, Lloyds for what they're going to do with the Aberdeen um, acquisition of, of Scottish widows. Uh, we'll look for more evidence there. And the numbers, uh, Lloyds, we think will be pretty solid um, as we move towards further selling down at the government's sake and, and moving towards the dividend. Here you can see um, an, a comparison of the Lloyd share price to Standard Chartered. Um, clearly at the start of this year, uh, the Standard Chartered uh, rating is far higher than Lloyd's. Um, what we've seen this year um, is the Lloyd's share price re-rate um, and, and we've seen a little bit of de-rating on Standard Chartered without much earnings growth coming through. So, so it'll be interesting to see how they report this week. Um, we've also got the oil uh, oil shares um, uh, reporting this week, and the oil price to date uh, this year has been pretty flat. In fact, last week the WTI was 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 fairly weak. So, oil the oil sector um, has been trading more as a bond proxy this year. So, if you look at BP here, um, compare it to the 10-year gilt, uh, UK government gilt, it's pretty much tracked that. So, people are buying these integrated oil companies for um, a higher yield than the, the, the government bond, but not really looking for, yeah, for, for much growth there. given the it's backdrop for the oil price at the moment. Um, after hours tonight, we've got Apple. Um, they came out with Q3 uh, guidance last week, so we shouldn't have too many surprises, but we will have Q4 uh, expectations coming through, which will be very interesting. They've just unveiled a, a big suite of new products so we'll see how bullish they are on, on those sales going into yeah, the end of the year. Um, finally we've also got Volkswagen this week. Um, this share price as you can see from the chart here has been following the European uh, recovery so here we've got the PMI numbers for, for Europe which is the forward-looking manufacturing data for Europe um, and, and the Volkswagen share price has, has been played as a proxy for that. Uh, there's been a little bit of nervousness going into their numbers, so hopefully they'll reassure. Um, and given the PMIs in Europe last week, uh, we think probably a stable sort of situation there. Thanks very much.